Hey everybody and welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. We're continuing on with part number four of our series on uh, Vue.js fundamentals, how to get started with Vue.js, and we're still kind of covering the basics. Now the previous video we talked about Vue directives. We learned what Vue directives were. Um, they're all prefixed with that V dash, if you remember right. And I said that we covered all the basic ones, remember? And so now we're gonna get into some of the more advanced ones. Now it's not too advanced, it's not too hard, it's pretty easy, but um, I just wanted to kind of, they're so important. These next few, that the next few videos are gonna cover are so important that we kind of want them to have their own video. Now this one is called V bind. It's a pretty basic concept, but I just wanted to kind of show you a few of the things that it can do and give you a few ideas on how you can use it. All right, so let's go ahead and explore V bind in action. All right, so now, um, again, if you wanna download the source code for all of this, this is available on GitHub. The link is in the description. You go there, you download it, you find the, the folder for the part we're in. We are in part number four. And if you want to get started, you're gonna go to start.html and you'll have the exact same code as I have on the screen and you can follow along, all right? Now at the end, of course, end.html is what we have at the end. Okay, now in the last video, we learned about things like view, uh, v-show, and v-if and things like that. Now I wanna show you another one called v-bind, uh, okay? Now v-bind is a little bit unique in um, kind of the way that this works. Okay, so now what if you wanted the same kind of functionality but you wanted to bind it to an actual attribute, okay? Well that's what a v-bind does. It allows you to bind um, data values that you have set down here that you're manipulating and bind them to attributes instead of just outputting them to the user Okay, so let's go ahead and look at an example of this. So we could use v dash bind and There's actually a great example in the documentation that I want to kind of copy and that is doing um, We're gonna bind it to the title element of this. Okay, so let's go ahead here We're gonna do v dash bind and then we do colon title and we're gonna set that equal to um, bind it to the value of another um, attribute, which in this case we have one attribute, one data attribute. So we're gonna bind it to message. So we're gonna expect the title attribute for this h1 to be equal to hello world, basically the exact same thing. Let's go ahead and refresh it here. If we hover over it, we'll get the title attribute. It says hello world. Now you're wondering, is it really view that's doing that? Well, let's add another parameter here and we're gonna say title. We're gonna say booyah, okay? <laughs> Just first thing that came to mind. Let's go ahead and refresh, hover over it, and sure enough, we didn't get it. Oh, that's because we forgot to adjust this. So it's still binding to the message title. Let's bind it to title, to this um, attribute, or this uh, data set. Come back over here, hover over it. We're gonna get booyah, which is awesome. Now, you, this is where things get interesting, is we can actually um, make things a little bit more dynamic. So let's say, you loaded the page on, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some actual JavaScript to make it somewhat dynamic. So we're gonna say new date, and then what this is going to do is this is gonna actually render a full date stamp, and it's gonna add that onto here. So you'll know that it's updating and that it's automatic. So let's go back over here, refresh, hover over this, and you'll see you have loaded the page on Sunday, October 30th, whatever, and it has everything in there, including my time zone and everything, okay? And all of that data came from this date stamp. Okay, so let's real quick, we'll go back over here, and you can see it's 929.07. Now let's go ahead and refresh, hover over it again. 929.25, okay? So it's updating in real time. Um, this attribute is actually being set um, live, which is really, really cool. So um, let's go ahead and refresh now. It should be 9.30, or not quite. It's not quite there yet. <laughs> Give it a couple more seconds. We'll refresh, and then we will be there. Okay, and now it's 9.30, so it, or 7.30, so it says here you've loaded it, and it's obviously 19.30. Okay, so um, anyway, I just want to show you guys basically how that works. Now, you might be wondering, why is this useful? Well, this can be useful for lots of different things. So, for example, let's think of another, another use case for this. Let's say that you're pulling in um, somewhere you have a URL, right? And we're gonna say image equals URL, and I'm gonna pass in a value here that goes to the UR the logo. Um, this is a URL to the view.js logo, okay? And then now here at the, underneath this H1, what we're going to do is we're gonna create an image tag, and we're going to vbind the source 
of the image, the actual so the actual source file to um, URL, and then we're going to also bind the alt attribute. Or let's do well, we could do title again for this, or we could do the alt attribute and set it equal to um, to title, right? And for that matter, we could also bind v bind title equal to title. All right. Now I did realize there's actually an error down here we got to fix, which is that um, under after title we need to put a comma, right? So we can have so this doesn't break. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, now that we've got all of that, we should expect now that the source of the image is set to our URL down here, and then the alt attribute and the title attributes are set to the title that we have down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just move on over to Chrome and refresh. And sure enough, we're getting that image now. We're getting we're getting that view.js image. If we go ahead and hover over it, you can see here the image source is equal to that the URL I've got down there. The alt attribute is equal to the title, and so is the title there. So if I hover over this, I should get the same title I got before. So we're able to set all these attributes for our HTML elements with the vbind directive. Okay, so that's why you would use vbind. It allows you to take the data from your um, from your data object and actually um, bind it or link it to um, your attributes in your HTML. So you wouldn't use the, you're not going to use mustache brackets, kind of like, you know, like we kind of get used to doing this in uh, Laravel. We would do something like source equals, and then we would do, we would do uh, brackets like this, right? That's what we would think to do, but you can't do that in Vue.js. You'll see you just get an error. Okay, so the way you handle that is using the vbind directive. Now, one of the nice things about vbind is, as you can see, it gets very verbose, okay? This is kind of annoying. You see vbind, vbind, vbind. It's very obnoxious. So one of the nice things about vbind is that you can actually just get rid of vbind and you can represent vbind with the semicolon, okay? Or not a semicolon, a normal colon. So just a normal colon source will do the exact same thing that all of these will do. So if you come over here, we'll get the same result and we can get rid of all of these and just make sure you keep the colon at the beginning. So we can even get rid of this one. And now we've cleaned this up significantly. It's really no different than it would look if you, you know, if it weren't in view, it just looked like that. So you basically just add that semicolon there to tell view to take over and actually render this. Okay, so last but not least, we render it. Everything should be the exactly the same um, as you can see here. Yeah, but everything looks the exact same. You just need to have that semi or the, the normal colon there and that's it. All right, so that's what vbind does. Hopefully that was useful for you guys. In the next video, we're gonna start looking at looping through objects, and this is gonna be very, very handy as we start getting, um, we start working with our interactive elements. We haven't quite got to interactive elements. I wanna finish vbind first, or I wanna finish the, a few of these directives first, but we're getting there, and it, the using loops and using, and learning how to connect and bind our models to our views Will help us start creating those interactive elements, which is what makes Vue.js so amazing and so powerful.